När man ska beskriva en grund... There are two important concepts for describing a groundwater reservoir. Storage coefficient and hydraulic conductivity. The storage coefficient gives the relationship between change in storage and change in groundwater level. With this coefficient, we can calculate how much the groundwater level changes for a certain addition or extraction of water. An aquifer is a geologic formation containing groundwater in such a way that it can be extracted by pumping. There is groundwater everywhere if you go deep enough, but you cannot pump water in a useful amount from all occurrences. In a clay soil, the groundwater flow to the well would be too small, so it's not an aquifer. But this formation I have here with coarse sand, it is an aquifer. I will now determine its storage coefficient. I measure the groundwater level first, 12.4 centimeters. Then I pump water. I have a well opposite of the central observation tube. I have now pumped 220 milliliter. That's the change in storage. And now I measure the new groundwater level, 10.3 centimeters. By relating the extracted volume to the change in groundwater level, I can determine the storage coefficient. Now I have prepared the same experiment once more, but now the groundwater table is very close to the ground surface at start. I do as last time. I measure the groundwater table, 18.8 centimeters. And I pump. The groundwater table stabilizes after the pumping. 110 milliliter were extracted. Happened to be exactly half of the amount last time. The groundwater level has now fallen. It is 14.7 centimeters. The decline of groundwater was now much larger, 4.1 centimeter as compared to 2.1 centimeter. Although the change in storage was much smaller, giving a much smaller storage coefficient. This might seem strange since a storage coefficient is a property that characterizes the aquifer. The first is a real storage coefficient determined when the groundwater table is well below the ground surface. The second experiment gave a too small coefficient, since the lowering of the water table was merely a question of decreasing pressure. A few big pores were emptied by the limited suction in the thin soil water zone. There was no soil, and thus no soil water high enough above the water table to be exposed to a sufficiently high suction for emptying the dominating smaller pores. If I return the water, we can see that the water table rises very quickly and up to the surface again. This may be important for the response of the groundwater table to rainfall and snow melt at the lower parts of hill slopes, where the groundwater table may be close to the ground surface. A small amount of infiltrated water gives a rapid and large rise of the water table, rapidly increasing the groundwater discharge to the stream.